What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because although we are a little bit late on this just because there's so much that's been happening in the Yu-Gi-Oh world but we're a little bit late however we're still gonna get it done and that is this Spellbook deck profile. Spellbook just got a huge buff with Judgment coming back to one on the most recent ban list. The ban list has been out for a few weeks so I'm sorry for doing this a little bit late however this deck is really really cool and it synergizes super well with the Dogmatica engine. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five videos a week on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you'll see it right here on the channel so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned in for all of that thank you guys all for watching i don't want to take up too much of your time so with that let's get into the deck profile all right so i'm super excited to be getting into this one i've actually never done spell books on the channel before but this is going to be a very fun deck profile so to get right into it we are starting off of course with three spell book magician of prophecy this is your best normal summon of the deck the card is insane it has some really fun synergies that you would not otherwise think of but this card of course is really good on normal summon you can add any spellbook card from your deck to your hand so of course we're playing three we're playing one of the newly unbanned spellbook of judgment this card is insane if you're resolving this card and you're just activating like two three spell cards after that you're going to be in such a good position for multiple reasons one on the end phase you're going to get to add a lot of cards to your hand so on turn three when it comes back to you you'll have so much advantage and on top of that this is going to put a floodgate on your side of the board which i'm going to talk about in just a second i'm sure you guys already know what it is but this card is just insane so the fact that this card is back at one is the reason why this deck is just so playable now and it's just so powerful and then of course we're playing three spell book of knowledge this card is just better than playing prosperity or extravagance in your deck just because it's a spell book name it's going to get you the draw too so this card is really powerful also keep in mind a lot of people used to use this as a draw engine but they never actually realized that knowledge you can actually send a spell book card from your hand to the graveyard as well so you don't actually always have to spend spell book magician most of the time this is what people used to use in the engines but now in spellbook itself of course you don't need to always send blue boy and then you have three spellbook of secrets this is just a roto for the deck add any spellbook card from your deck to your hand which is insanely powerful then we're playing two spellbook of fate one spellbook of masters one spellbook of wisdom and then one spellbook of power now we're not playing spellbook of eternity i'm not playing spellbook of life i believe that's the equip spell name we're not playing those ones just because they don't really get you anywhere further than where you're already going to be getting with this deck so i hope it makes a lot of sense when i say i'm playing just the best spellbook names of course these ones for the consistency spellbook of fate is a really powerful card master just becomes any other spellbook card in your graveyard which is really nice and then of course wisdom and power are just really really powerful cards in themselves so that's all we're going to need to play we just want to play the consistency stuff we don't want to play like the win more cards these are all the spellbook names that we need and then we're playing one Jaugen the spiritualist for anyone who doesn't know Jaugen the spiritualist says that neither player can special summon monsters when it's on the board and then if you are going second funny enough if you are going second you can activate its effect to discard a random card from your hand to destroy all special summon monsters on the field which is really nice it gives you this neat interaction going second however Jaugen is essentially going to be accessed always by your spellbook of judgment which is extremely powerful because if you're going first and you activate your judgment again not only in the end phase you're going to be adding a bunch of spellbook names to your hand but you're going to be able to summon a floodgate monster to your side of the field so that's really powerful then we are playing a dogmatica package i think this package is essentially what pushes this deck over the edge i guess you could say and the reason for that is because the dogmatica cards themselves provide you some protection provide you some way to put extra damage on the board this way if you're going first you set up your board second you're going to be stopping your opponent from trying to make their own board and then turn three when it comes back to you you're going to be going for the otk going to push for a lot of damage right so we are playing three dogmatica ecclesia this card is really powerful also it synergizes really well with your spellbook magician of prophecy because if you normal summon this you can actually link this away into a link one which i'll get into when we get into the extra deck but then it's going to give you an extra deck monster on your side of the field which means now you can special summon your dogmatica ecclesia ecclesia can now search another dogmatica card and then you can see where the synergy is there right so dogmatica ecclesia is of course really powerful we're playing two fleur de lis we're not playing maximus the reason i'm not playing maximus is because tier limits is very powerful despia is also another deck that maximus is not good into so we actually don't want to play maximus in this build we're just playing the fleur de lis because fleur de lis again it acts as a body for you like i said you really want to set up a turn one where you're always going to be guaranteed for the turns to come back to you. So when it's your turn three, you're going to be pushing for a lot of damage. And Fleur de Lis lets you do that. That's why we're playing two of it. Because essentially what Fleur de Lis lets you do is it special summons itself, so it's a body. It's also going to negate a monster your opponent controls, which means that it's also going to be disruption, right? So that's why we're playing the two Fleur de Lis. And then on top of that, it's also a spellcaster that's level six or higher, which I'll talk about in a minute, but that is also relevant. Then of course, we're playing three Nadir Servant. This card is essentially Sky Striker Engage now. This card is just so powerful for so many different 
different ways. So we're playing three, of course, the newly unbanned Nadir Servant back to three, and we're playing three Dogmatica Punishment. Again, like I said, you do want to control the board, and this is kind of how you're going to be doing it with your Dogmatica Ecclesia. If you don't open a floor to lease in your hand, you can search a floor, or if you do open a floor, you can search a Punishment. Punishment is also really good because it's going to be sending cards from your extra deck to the graveyard. They're either going to be more disruption for you, or they're going to benefit you in different ways. So that's why we're playing three. Then, of course, the only hand trap we're playing is three DD Crow. DD Crow is the best hand trap of today's format. Now, again, in the future, if you guys are watching this in like two to three months, and let's just say Tier Limits is not the best deck, I don't know, I'm just gonna give you that situation, then DD Crow can always be swapped out for another card that is relevant in that format. So, you know, if it becomes a back row heavy format, you can take out the DD Crows and play back row hate. There's just so many different things you guys can do with these three spots with the DD Crow, but for this format, I think DD Crow is really important. Then we are playing another win condition. So we're playing the one terraforming, but we're playing two Secret Village of the Spellcaster. This card is insane. If you guys don't know what this card does, if you control a Spellcaster type monster, which you're always gonna control a Spellcaster because your Dogmatica stuff is Spellcasters, your Dragon's a Spellcaster, your Spellbook Magician is a Spellcaster, you even have cards in your extra deck that are Spellcasters. So if you control a Spellcaster monster, your opponent cannot activate spell cards and that's just insane because you're locking them out essentially from using any of their spell cards. So it's just another win condition for you. But because we're playing the Terraforming and some field spells, we're also playing the One Mystic Mind. I know, I hate to say it, but you have to be playing the One Mystic Mind. If you end up going second and your opponent has a really big board that's kind of difficult to out, what you can end up doing is use the Mystic Mind, have it on the board, then you can normal summon, let's say your Jalgen, let's say you have this in your hand, you can normal summon your Jalgen safely, activate its effects, pop all cards your opponent controls. Yes, then Mystic Mind is going to be affecting you, but again, like I said, if you have something like a Secret Village, it's really good because you can just activate the Secret Village on top of the Mystic Mind. So there's just so many different ways where Mystic Mind is just relevant, so you have to be playing the one Mystic Mind, in my opinion. Then we're playing an engine that I know can be a little bit pricey, I know a lot of people don't have, and I'm just going to give you guys some different options after we talk about it, but the Magician's Soul engine is just so powerful in this deck. One, it provides you with a dark monster, which is really good, and I'm going to talk about that later. Again, I talk a lot about a lot of things, but the synergy makes sense later and I'll get into the synergy I promise but Magician Souls is so good because again first of all it's a spellcaster for you which is good for Secret Village but also it's going to be able to provide you with a Link 1 monster that helps you protect your Jaogen and that is Link Karibo which is really nice because now you have a Jaogen on the board if you have a Link Karibo on the board as well then you know your opponent's not going to be attacking over the Jaogen which is really powerful and then of course we're playing the one Illusion of Chaos and the one Preparation of Rights now I know a lot of people like to play two Illusion of Chaos two Magician Souls that's like the typical standard ratios but the reason I'm playing the one Illusion and the one Preparation is because if we do have our spellbook of judgment spellbook of judgment obviously gets its most value when you use more spell cards so preparation of rights essentially acts as illusion of chaos for you and that's why you're just playing the one prep rather than the two illusion of chaos also another thing i want to mention remember how i talked about fleur de lis being a level six or higher spellcaster this is also really good because you can send it to the graveyard with magician souls if you don't have an illusion of chaos in the deck right so you can still special summon your magician souls because you can always just send a fleur de lis and then lastly we're playing the one call by the grave as well as the one should all schism schism of course is really powerful because it's going to give you access to window which is just another floodgate monster which is just another win condition and i think that's why this deck is so cool is because it has so many different win conditions and so many different ways you can actually beat your opponent if jalgen is not enough you can make Winda. also schism makes it really good because you can play around something like dark ruler no more if they dark ruler or imperm or forbidden droplets your jalgen you can still go schism after that summon a window and they're still going to be locked out of their extra deck which is so so powerful and that's why i just really love this deck but now i want to talk about why magician soul package can be swapped out now i know like i said earlier this engine can be a little bit pricey not everyone has access to this engine so if you guys want a more budget alternative for this engine what you can do is you can take out the two magician souls the one illusion as well as the one preparation so these four cards and put in these four cards that i have here in the side deck and the four cards are a second jogging it's not a very bad thing to play a second jogging this card is actually a pretty good normal summon if you need it to be and we're playing three rivalry of the warlords this is just a really good floodgate that you can play in this deck because again you're only playing spellcaster monsters anyways it's always going to be hurting your opponent way more than it hurts you if it hurts you at all even so that's why this card is just so so powerful so if you guys don't have access to the magician souls and illusion of chaos package these one two three four cards can be swapped with these one two three four cards right so just keep that in mind i just want to give you guys a more budget alternative for the main deck if you guys don't have access to magician souls moving on to the extra deck here we are playing with a one titanic cloud the ash dragon this card of course is really good gets you into your ecclesia the one garura you send this off in the dear servant and the dear servant becomes a draw one plus a search sky striker engage i'm telling you it's so powerful then we're playing the 
two entes. And this is really important, of course, with your dogmatica punishment. We're playing the one window as well as the one app cologne. Now, app cologne, you're always going to be sending off of your Nadir servant. Let's say you're going first, because what ends up happening with app cologne is you can set up your schism. Schism essentially lets you set up your window, which is really powerful. So that's why you're playing this engine. And then we're playing the one wind Begasus at Ignister. This card is also another form of disruption. You can send it off of your punishment, your Nadirs. You're playing the one totally awesome. Now, this is the one that people might be like, why are you playing totally awesome? What does it do if you send it off punishment? Or what does it do if you send it off Nadir servant? Well, what it does, and remember how I talked about very at the beginning of the video where I said there is some synergy with something in the extra deck with Spell with Magician of Prophecy. It's a water type and Toad has a really cool effect where if it's sent to the graveyard, you can target a water monster in your graveyard, add it back to your hand. So if you run out of your Spell with Magicians or you know you need to get access to an extra monster so that you can get a normal summon, search another card, etc, etc to push for game, what you can end up doing is send your Totally Awesome. Totally Awesome now gets to add back a Spell with Magician that you may have used earlier. So that's the synergy with Totally Awesome. Then we're playing the one Crowley. Crowley is a really good card. It's also a Spellcaster for you. We're playing the two Artemis. Now this card is really important because it's a link one. You can make it with your Spell Magician of Prophecy. So that's why I think this card is really powerful. Again, it's another card that works really well under Secret Village. We're playing the one Link Karibo. Link Karibo is really important because remember how I mentioned earlier with Magician Souls. If you go Magician Souls into Link Karibo and you have a Jaugen on your side of the field, now you're protecting your Jaugen from battle. So it's going to be very difficult for your opponent to out something like Jaugen. And then we're playing the one Relinquished Anima. This card is a little bit more sacky, but if you are forced to go second, you summon your Magician Souls. And if your opponent doesn't play around the extra monster zone, then you just make your anima and then anima just helps you break different boards, right? So a lot of anima is really cool. And then we're playing the one Celine as well as the one access code. Very easy engine to go into the OTK, right? So this extra deck I think makes a lot of sense. It's just in the deer servant and punishment targets and then cards that are going to help you OTK or protect your board. So that's why I really like this deck. I think this deck synergizes super well with together. The Dogmatica stuff as well as the Spellbook stuff together is really nice. Spellbooks are back, baby. I think this deck is so cool, especially with Judgment being back at one. I'm so excited. I definitely think you guys should try this out for yourselves because it's just such a powerful and fun deck and it really brings you back to the good old spellbook days so i think you guys should definitely try it out for yourselves so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy i think spellbook is a really really cool deck for today's format now it may not be the best deck it may not be a tier zero tier one contender however i think this deck synergizes so well with the dogmatica package and that and alone just makes it very very fun and it can do some pretty broken things i mean jaugen plus link Karibo is still pretty strong now if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on spanko deck profiles dual videos product openings combo videos all that good stuff you'll see it right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned in for all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace